Chief Flight Lieutenant Katie Shepek. Uh, I'm in, with the Royal Air Force. I'd like to spend um, 15 minutes talking to you now about uh, you know, why um, you should join the Royal Air Force uh, at the moment. So uh, initially, despite the fact that I could tell you that we've got subsidised housing, that you'd get subsidised food, uh, there's free gym, healthcare, world travel and six weeks holiday. Uh, but apart from that, we actually um, have 60, over 60 different branches and trades within the Air Force. We talk about branches for an officer and we talk about trades for non-commissioned and uh, both together, there's a, an enormous variety of jobs. And that's one of the, the things that we find when people um, do find out a little bit more information about the Air Force. They're always very surprised actually about the range of jobs that we've got. Um, so with 60 different branches and six of those um, uh, jobs that we're offering as well, they don't require any qualifications at all, and there's over uh, 20 different apprenticeships that you can take. But I'd like to talk to you tonight about two of those um, trades that I've picked out, actually, that um, uh, just tie in with the theme that we're offering tonight, and that's the RF police and the physical training instructor. So I think both of these are very diverse and exciting career choices. Um, so RAF police, we're looking at um, somebody joining, if they were going to join a non-commission, that's between 17 and a half years of age and up to 47. Um, you just require English language, there's full UK driving licence to meet the health and safety requirements, um, pass M and selection test and pass fitness test. So these are the sort of things, that, just the small details, I just wanted to get them out there if there are any questions about that. Also looking at salaries, we've got uh, the RF police start on 15,670 and after the training that you'll receive. We talk about training in two parts. The first part is to get you into the Air Force and just teach you military stuff. Um, and um, that's what we call phase one training. And then when you go on to, uh, to do the choice of what job it is that you actually want to do, for example, being a, an RF policeman, um, when you finish that phase two training, then your salary will go up to £20,000. So let's talk a little bit about what you would uh, expect to do in the life um, of an RF policeman then. So there's obviously security activities, um, obviously cyber, you know, very important and forefront at the moment with information security, uh, counterintelligence, security risk management and airport security. There's also that operational threat assessment and advice that you would uh, become a subject matter expert uh, about. Um, personnel security, such as security education, vettings and screening, we do a lot of that actually in the Air Force, and you will, will obviously be subject to that yourself actually were you to join. Investigations including digital forensics, crime scene examination, criminal intelligence, child support and domestic violence support and surveillance. And one of the other things um, I thought also in the theme of this evening was that the RF police dog handling duties which are including uh, protection dogs and detection dogs. So that's um, actually a, a whole role that you could undertake actually as a specialization within the RF police. Um, however, if there was uh, any further questions that you wanted to ask me about that afterwards, then please feel free to email me, um, I'm more than happy. Um, so that's just a little bit about the RF police actually, but then I wanted to talk to you about a physical training instructor that's one of the, the other of the two roles actually that I wanted to uh, talk about tonight, just in the theme of the evening, uh, amongst all the other things we've got. So PTI, we call them, that's a physical training instructor. That's, um, we can, we accept them a little bit younger. So from 16 up to the age limit of 47, we'll also be looking for um, English language and maths actually with that one. Um, a lot of the other things remain the same um, as far as, there's usually a commitment after that phase two training. So the phase one training, you do at Holton, the phase two training for um, the PTI. We would, we would be looking at a minimum of a three year commitment after your phase two training. That's one of the things that people do um, uh, ask quite a lot. They're worried about the commitment that they make when they join the service. So you would initially sign on for a 12 year commitment, but that it doesn't hold you to that. It's not like the old days where you used to have to buy yourself out. So uh, all, all we're saying is there would be a minimum three years after your phase two training. And then after that, if you wanted to leave, that would be up to you. Um, so let's talk a little bit more about the PTI then. Um, as well as getting all the advantages that you'd get for the RF police, um, the sort of roles that you would be doing would be looking at conducting fitness and uh, health, and health tests as well as uh, counselling. That would be to people within the service. 
So as you can imagine, actually, the, the standard usually of uh, fitness within the RAF is, is probably slightly uh, higher than it is outside um, in, amongst the general public. So your level of so your level of knowledge actually as a subject matter expert would be you know very high. Um, you would also organise sporting and adventurous activities. Um, you know, for me that seems to sound like what you the kind of things that you would choose to do in your spare time. That's actually going to be your full time job. Um, so when you organise all these sporting and adventure activities, that's like the adventure training you would not only um, organize those events, but usually accompany a lot of people on them as well. And um, you also have the opportunity to uh, take a lot of those sports um, and get uh, formal qualifications in all of those too. Uh, you also manage a wide range of uh, sporting activities just within, uh, in general within uh, on the station. Um, actually, uh, it, we still uh, tend to have a tradition of Wednesday afternoon where you would see quite a lot of uh, sport being played if you were to walk around any of the RAF stations and we have inter services and um, uh, certainly uh, friendlies, all sorts of different league matches actually where that are played within the stations. One of the other things that um, we do talk about are those transferable skills. So opportunities um, also available for you, which would also give you very good transferable skills would be in survival training uh, training consultancy and uh, leadership development. That's also another big part of the service. Um, one of the reasons that I didn't mention actually with the PTI, one of the reasons that you uh, initially, you'll find that your, your salaries are a little bit higher, 17,000 when you start, and then after your phase two training, that goes up to 28,500 is because there's, um, there's more specialist training required as a PTI. And when you um, graduate from your phase two training, that's the second part of training that you do about the actual job. Um, you actually graduate as a corporal, uh, which is one of the first ranks. So you're paid, that's why the salary is slightly higher because you're paid per rank actually, um, as opposed to experience usually, it's about the rank. Um, so just uh, overall in general, um, talking uh, within the, the branches. I was just featuring there really on the police and the, um, the PTI. I was also um, thought that there may be an opportunity for somebody to ask any questions actually. So I just saved a few minutes. I was um, just checking in the chat there, but no, there isn't, other, there isn't any other questions. So all I can say is thanks very much for your time this evening. If there is anything else, uh, any of the questions that you have, I'd be more than happy to answer those for you.